set our work aside. We leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. On this your holy day, we've come to give you praise on this day. Amen. Amen. Just got a few announcements. Um, so Saturday the 22nd is a church nature walk. So uh, all are welcome to that. Um, there'll be a Vespers on uh, Friday the 28th of July. So they'll be at 7 p.m. at the church. So everyone can come to that. And uh, on Saturday, 29th of July, it's um, home church, but there will be Sabbath school at 10.30 a.m. at the church, and then there's a campfire and worship 3 p.m. at the mayor's place. So bring your own food and RSVP to Daniel, and there's a contact number in the, um, the newsletter. Um, now, we've locked in a date for the family fun day, so... Um, Sunday, 3rd of September, Family Fun Day. Um, so if you wish to volunteer for this special time, we're going to have a big community event. Of organized, we've got a jumping castle and a play centre. There's going to be lots of fun activities. So if you'd like to um, volunteer to help out, that would be awesome. So you can see me or Daniel. So this is a wonderful community day um, that we can... Um, we, it would be good um, for the community to come and see what our church is here and know that we're the Seventh-day Adventist Church and that we can spread our love to Jesus. So that's the main purpose of having this community event and having fun at the same time. Um, and 19th of August to 23rd of September, um, Daniel's going to be starting an evangelistic series. So that will be from the 19th of August to 23rd of September. So that will be um, yeah, wonderful with... Daniel, Pastor Daniel. Okay, our first song today is 248, Oh How I Love Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful song? Oh How I Love Jesus. Please stand while we sing this song.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, my instructions were that we have a special item from our friends from Castlemaine, from Vanuatu, and they were to sing before I had the prayer. So that's the little hold up, but I'm sure we will get it right in a few moments. I can tell you about Mary, I can. <clears throat> Very interesting it is. I visit Mary every day and she's in the final days of her life. <clears throat> and uh, when I go in, I say, and she's asleep, but I say, Mary, and she wakes, and I say, Jesus loves you. And... Uh, she says, yes, I know. And I said, do you know the little song, Jesus loves me, this I know? The Bible tells me so. And when I went in the next day, that was Wednesday, <coughs> excuse me, um, I said, Mary loves you. Uh, God loves you, Mary. Got to keep that in her mind. And... Uh, the next thing she starts singing. Jesus loves me, this I know. And I said, Mary, how did you learn that? How did you know that? She said, when I was a little girl, I learned it. Praise the Lord.
Thank you. Now that little man there with the pink shirt on, his name's Denick. Stand up, Denick. That's him. They came from Vanuatu. <clears throat> oh, it must be 12 months ago now, would it? Nearly, I think. And uh, I get a phone call. Um, and it's Denick on the phone. And they were living in Bendigo at the time. And... Uh, come want to come to church and so I said we'll pick you up and we did now he rings me from Castle Main that's where they live and he wants to come up and sing for us and uh, he he's got my name it's very endearing he says uh, Claudie Claudie <laughs> it's Claude but <laughs> priceless thank you Danny can come again do you think so there you are. Yes, wonderful. <clears throat> now, this might sound a little bit strange, but when I saw the hymn up there, Oh, how I love Jesus, the thoughts that I've got that I wrote down is on the very same thing. And I'm going to share just a couple of thoughts with you before we pray. Now, most of you would have heard of Q&A on the ABC. I don't watch it, but it's there. Question and answers. Now, this is a question and answer, but I don't want the answer. It's more perhaps of an observation. And this is what I've got written down. Now, I don't want you to put your hand up or anything. I just want you to think about it. In your family, have you ever felt unloved or not accepted? Think about it. Number two, in your church, was there a times when you felt that you were not loved or respected? as you thought you should be. The third one. Has there been a time in your life when you felt God didn't love or care for you? I'm sure when you think about it, because sometimes discouragement comes into our life over things that happen, and uh, we've got to deal with them. Well, I say to you, don't feel too bad. Jesus felt that way too. When total darkness separated Jesus from his father, he cried out, what? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The father didn't forsake him at all. He was, he was there. And the truth is, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would have everlasting life. The thought that I want to bring, and this is another part of God's love, and uh, I didn't write it, I wish I had the ability to do what this man's done. God's love does not hinge on yours. The abundance of your love does not increase his. The lack of your love does not diminish his. Your goodness does not enhance his love, nor does your weakness dilute it. God loves you simply because he has chosen to do so. He loves you when you don't feel lovely. He loves you when no one else loves you. Others may abandon you, you may, they may divorce you and ignore you. And God will love you always, no matter what. In 
incredible words, but that's God's love. Many years ago, when I was younger, we learned a chorus. Some of you may know it, some of you probably don't. It's an old one. And it goes like this, and it's the, 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 the music and the song. There is enough of God's love to fill the ocean deep. There's enough of God's love to reach the mountain peak. There's enough of God's love to touch the highest star. And there's still enough left to fill your heart and mine. Thank you, Lord, for your infinite love. Now, we'll have the prayer. And I've been privileged this morning to uh, offer the prayer of the congregation to our Heavenly Father. So those who would like to kneel, do so. And those who can't, bow your heads. <clears throat> our gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, as part of your family in Bendigo, we, we acknowledge, Lord, that you are our Saviour, our Redeemer, our intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary. Lord, we live today because every moment you breathe into our nostrils the breath of life. Lord, you are the bread of life, supplying our every need. You are the water of life, flowing from the rock of, found of salvation. Lord, you are the good shepherd. You not only care for your sheep, you lead us in the paths of righteousness and by the still waters. Lord, you are the light of the world. You are the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by you. Lord, sometimes we become a little discouraged even as your disciples were at some time discouraged. And you told them before you were ready to leave that uh, you gave them a, a promise and you gave that promise to us today and it's found in John 14, 1 to 3. And I'd like each one, if they can say it with me, that let not your hearts be troubled, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also." And the words of Psalm 91, Father, we pray that you will cover us with your feathers and under your wings we will trust in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Apologise, people. I'm supposed to announce the offering. So, uh, the deacons, would you like to take up the offering for us, please? Sorry about that.
Let's bow our heads while we ask the blessing on the offering. <clears throat> our gracious Father, thank you, Lord, that you provide for all our needs in every way. And we thank you, Lord, that um, you have given us um, the opportunity to work and earn for our living, but we are to return uh, a tenth of that to you and offerings as well. And so, Lord, today we thank you that we've been able to do that. And um, we pray that you will bless it, you will multiply it, that it will be a blessing to the work in wherever it has been given. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second hymn today is Hymn 200, The Lord is Coming. So if you'd like to stand up and we'll sing that next hymn. Could all the children please come down for the children's story? Our story today is from the Uncle Arthur's bedtime stories and it's called... Gladys, great heart. I've got some pictures that you can see up here. There's Gladys. What's behind those big brown eyes, Gladys dear? Asked Mama as she stepped quietly up beside her little daughter. I'm thinking, said Gladys. You're always thinking, said Mama. 
Am I, she said, giving, sorry. Am I, she said, she said giving off, I'm going off into dreamland again. Gladys loved to go out in the backyard all by herself and sit on a log or on the lawn and plan beautiful things or count the ants at her feet or lie on the back, on her back and watch the clouds go by. Do you like to do that, sit at the back? Maybe in summertime it's nice to do that, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Then she would come indoors again, bringing sunshine and happiness everywhere she went. Nothing pleased her more than to gather flowers for the table or run messages for Mama or have Daddy's slippers ready for him just in the right place when he came home. That's why they called her Gladys Great Heart. What's behind the clouds, Mama, she asked after a little while. The big blue sky, said Mama. And what's behind the big blue sky? The stars, Mama's voice was tender. And what's behind the stars, Mama? More stars, said Mama. And what's behind the more stars? She's got lots of questions, is not she? That's where God lives. How far he must be. It seems a long way to us, but it's not far to him, said Mama. He can travel so swiftly, you see. He could come all the way from his home to ours in less than a second. What about the stars in the way? Oh, he knows the way here. Do you think he has time to think about us? I'm sure he does and he loves us very much and wants to be good and kind and wants us to be good and kind as he is. And does he love all the little children in the world? All of them, just the same. You see, we all belong to him, so we are all just one big family in his sight. What a lot of brothers and sisters I must have. Yes, said Mama, hundreds and thousands of them. And God wants us to love them all as he does. To be kind to them, especially to the poor and the sick and those who cannot care for themselves. Gladys fought, thought for a long time. Peggy is sick, she said. May I take her my painting book this afternoon and the brush, of course. If you wish, said Mama, I'm sure Jesus would be pleased. Do you think you would know about it? Oh, yes. The angels would tell him at once and all heaven will be happier. Do you really think so? Oh, yes, said Mama. It's just as if you gave it right into his own hand. For did not Jesus say one time long ago, long ago, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. I think I will take that nice pin cushion you made for me as well, Mama. I think Peggy would like to play with that too. So they planned to visit Peggy and and from Peggy, they went to others who were sick and poor, scattering joy and gladness along their pathway and making friends with the children of God who made the skies and filled them with stars. And when Jesus comes back through the stars to take his people to their heavenly home, I think he'll want to take Gladys Greatheart with him too. Don't you? Would you like to be there with all the people to go to heaven? I do. I can't wait to see Jesus. Won't it be wonderful? Okay, you can go back to your seats now.
car upon him, yeah. <laughs> this is for Jason, probably, yeah. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. Is it, it is my privilege to be with you today. And I hope we will start our journey together today. So, going to heaven, yes? Okay. I'm so glad to be here with you, and also I would like to, to thank my pastor, senior pastor, Pastor Daniel, thanks for inviting me to come and, you know, give sermon today in this church. Seems like our multi multicultural church, right? From where, from where, Korea, Burma, and many places. Thanks God for preparing a place for us to come together and pray together and sing together and, you know, listening his word. Praise God for that. And I would like to thank you all for joining our service today. And I hope you will enjoy or but try to understand my English. I've been here 13 years, but English never improved. <laughs> I don't know what to do. But anyway, I will try my best, and I hope you will be understand. Before we go ahead, let us our, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us for this time. Let us bow our head. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for loving us, and give us a time to come and worship you today. Thank you, Lord. Forget all our sin. Be with us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Today, I'm going to talk about, you know, this, this topic, preparing for the second coming of Christ. Are we prepared? Are we prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ? Oh, here it says that, no, no, no. You know, yeah, the boy, the little boy here said no. Because probably he's not ready. Are we prepared? Yes. I, I just remember Claude said that John 14 verse 3. What did he say? Why we need to prepare? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you and then I will come back again to take you home. Yes? If you don't prepare it, you can't go home with Jesus. When he returned. And why do we need to prepare? Why do we need to prepare? Because we want to live with Jesus forever and ever, right? You all know my wife is sick. She always complaining. Not always complaining because she got sick. And she, she said, oh, oh, I got stomach ache or headache or whatever. And I said, don't worry. One day. In heaven, you won't suffer anything. In heaven, in heaven, you know, only one thing, we need to prepare ourselves for his coming. Why we need to prepare? Because we live to, with Jesus forever. Besides that, John 13, I sorry, Romans 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time that now, it is higher time to awake out of sleep. For none is our salvation nearer than when we believed. That's why Jesus is coming soon, my brothers and sisters. We are waiting for him. And why we need to prepare? Because here, I don't know if you see clear or not. You know, Lewis Berry Cover said that heaven is a, ple a prepare place for a prepared people. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Hell, also another place prepared for the other people as well. And hell is prepared place for unprepared who? People. If you are not prepared now, one place prepared for you. How do you think that? Are you 
prepared yourself now or unprepared? If you prepare, if you prepared, God have a prepared place for you, my friends. If you don't prepare, Satan prepare a place for you. You can choose. I can't force you which way you are going to choose, but you can choose yourself. Remember, you will remember Jesus told the parable about the ten, ten what? Virgins. All are virgins. Not just only one, yeah? All are virgins. Therefore, here we need to prepare ourselves as well. Ready for in such hour and ye, ye think not the Son of Man come. Why we have to prepare? We don't know the time. We don't know the date. We don't know the year. But Jesus said, always prepare. Always prepare. This the parable of the ten virgins. Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. Jesus said that parable, parable because he wants you and I to prepare ourselves. So when he come, we can get eternal life. This is the parable that Jesus wants you and I to remember that. Probably we all are sitting in the church this morning. And next day, maybe we go somewhere. We go different place, places. But remember, we need to prepare ourselves. Serve whenever we go. The parable of ten virgins, this parable was told by Jesus himself almost about 2,000 years ago. You know, remember, these virgins got invited to the wedding. And they got their lamb. Is that lamb? Yes. The Bible. If you read Psalms chapter 119 verse 105, you will see. And also the virgins got invited to the same location. They got their same journey, the same location, looking for the same bridegroom. You know, looking for the same time. They got invited to the wedding. But five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Why that? How can we divide? They are the same virgins. But the time when the bridegroom delay himself and you know, we know straight away. Some are prepared some are not prepared. So here is a, a little bit. Remember, this is the, the virgins. Represent those who are in the kingdom of heaven. And five wise, five wise, yeah, wise, virgins prepare. And the other, foolish, unprepared, unprepared. And, you know, the new what they need, they were prepared and wise. How about the unprepared? Thought they were safe until it was too late. Thought others were too what? That is all, my friend. If you are prepared today, the place is prepared for you. If you don't prepare, that is no good. So, we need to prepare ourselves for his coming. Therefore, Jesus, uh, the Bible test here. Matthew 25, verse 13. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. No one knows. 
I remember before I came to Australia in 2009, I got interview in 2008 to be able to reset it in Australia and they did ask us a few questions. You know, we have to go through step by step before we came here and medical checkup and everything. We got interview and medical checkup all done and we be waiting for many months. And one day I sent an email to Embassy, Australia Embassy, Bangkok in Thailand. And I said, look, all my friends got medical checkup, interviewed the same day, and my, our family, they all gone to Australia. What happened with my family? They check it up about a few weeks, and they sent me another email. And it said on the email, because of you can't go to Australia yet because your wife was pregnant. Ah. Strange to me. And you know, my wife, did, my wife didn't pregnant anything. I don't know where did they get the information. <laughs> I've been waiting for many months. I don't know why. And they said, that because your wife pregnant, that's why you can't go. You have to wait until your wife, you know, give birth. After six months, we will think about it. No. And then after I read an email, I sent another email. And I said to them, no, my wife didn't, you know, pregnant. And we all got three kids with us. My kids are, you know, the youngest one is six years already. And, and then they tried to find out what happened with my case. And after that, you know, before we came to, before we come to Australia, we need to prepare. We need to prepare ourselves ahead. What kind of food we should eat before we, as we can be able to reset it in Australia. You know, many things, many rules. Our friends from Australia said, "Hey, if you want to come soon, you must be prepared. This we must, you must do this, you must do that." And then we follow them. Suggestions. And. And a few months later, after I sent email to the embassy, Bangkok, and they went to Thailand again in the refugee camp, and we got another interview, and they made sure, are you sure your wife is not pregnant or whatever, <laughs> you see? Yes. And then, finally, we got a chance to come here. My friends, how about heaven? Australia is not heaven, right? But for our Korean people, heaven in Australia. You see, heaven is here, but not really heaven. Yeah, <laughs> not really heaven. Yeah, that's why I would like to here, would like to encourage each one of us here. Prepare ourselves to meet Jesus. How can we prepare again? Let's see. And we will how did our, you know, allergy wife suggest this? You all can read, right? I don't know if you see clear or not. Allergy wife said that about which class are you? There are only two classes, prepared and unprepared, you know. We, the class represented by the foolish virgins are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believed the truth, but they have no yield themselves to the Holy Spirit working, working. That is true. You know, there are two groups one day. A group in the right hand, another group in the left hand. And the right hand, those who are prepared for his coming. And the left hand, those who are not prepared for his coming. We think about it. And again, that is from Elegy White again. Christian, Christian Service, page 41. If you read it, not one in 20 prepared. Prepare for what? 
prepare for Jesus come. It is solemn statement that I make to the church that not one in 20 whose names are registered upon the church books are prepared to close their earthly history and would at varied without God and without hope in the world as the common sinners. They are profusely serving God, but they are more earnestly serving them. This half and half work is a constant denying of Christ rather than confession of Christ. Not only one in twenty prepare friends. It's not a joke. That is really. But, you know, probably yes, probably no. But anyway, are we prepared is the most question we should ask ourselves. If we, we need the Holy Spirit. Why we need the Holy Spirit for preparing Jesus coming? The Holy Spirit is we teach us, we lead us, we lead us to the right way. The Spirit of Christ, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, no, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Yeah? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We can do by ourselves, but with the Holy Spirit, we can do it. We're not doing it because the Holy Spirit does it for you and I. And another question, how to prepare, how to prepare ourselves to meet, I don't know what happened with it, how to prepare ourselves to meet Jesus. Why? Why? We know Jesus is coming soon. That's why we have to do it. And why? There are too many Christians. I read a book and it said, I don't know, it said right or wrong, there are 3,000 Christian denominations in this world. 3,000 Christian denominations in this world. Which is right? Seventy is seventy church is the right church or not? We don't know. But you know, we need to follow what the Bible. We need to read the Bible and do it as the Bible said. Because Matthew seven twenty one, not everyone who call me Lord, Lord, what? Not into, yeah, not into 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 the heaven. Only. Those who does the will of my father. Yes? That is the, another question we have to think about, my friends. We thought sometimes every Saturday we come and sit on our chair. And the other days we do whatever we want to do. We thought we are safe. No. The unpre unprepared group thought themselves. We are safe. Yes, we are safe, but reality is not. So, if we are prepared for the second coming of Jesus, we need to ask God to give us the Holy Spirit. Let, let go through a few things. This topic, I just like to share with you only five top, uh, only five reasons. How do we have to? You know, repent. Uh, how do we have to prepare ourselves? Number one, repentance. Acts 3, 19. Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may blot it out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. We need to ask ourselves, am I, am I fully repent? If not, we need to start it now. Number two, faith in Christ. We need to have faith in Christ.
Christ. But with our faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligence seek him. Number one, repent. Number two, faith in Christ. Number three, diligence, study of God's word. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Of God. So we need to study diligently the word of God, my friends. We can't go through quickly. We need to read it and think about it and pray it and ask God, the Holy Spirit, to guide us. So he will guide us. And we need another one, pray and communion with God. Praying without ceasing. We need to pray. We need to pray. Pray all the time. And ask God, Holy Spirit. Paul encouraged us to pray without ceasing. We need to pray. Elegy White also mentioned pray is we're talking to God. And we read the Bible, the word of God that means God taught to us. So if you want to have a good relationship with God, we need to pray and study his, his word. And number five, sharing the gospel. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 15 verse 16. Preparing for, for Christ's return also involves sharing the good news of salvation with others. We are prepared, we say ourselves. But we don't want to share the good news to the other people. It's not our prepare for his coming. That's why we are called to witness bringing hope and reconciliation to a broken world. Let us seize every opportunity to share the love of Christ and the message of the salvation. My friends, how to prepare? Remember, if you play game, hike, hide and, hike and what? Seek, yeah. Imagine if you pray, if you play game, that game. If somebody close he or she, his or her eyes and count one, two, three, four to twenty, during that time, what do you do? You have to run and hide yourself. So if Darren closed his eye and said, hey, if I run and hide yourself and I will run, yeah, call one, two, three. I can't wait until 15 and then I will say, oh, I will run now. Too late, yeah? Too late. So we need to prepare ourselves. It is time to start now. We can't wait until tomorrow. Can we? No, we have to start it today. So that means the saying, nothing about Jesus is coming. He told us in John chapter 14, verse 3, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come in back. How long ago? Almost 2,000 years. Who knows? Not tomorrow. Jesus is not coming tomorrow. Who knows? Nobody knows. I don't know either. Yeah? But we need to be ready all the time, my friend. Otherwise, it will be too late for us. It will be too late for us. That's why... The memory verse here is said that why it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the what? As in the rebellions, my friend. Do you hear the word of God today? If you are here the word of God today, do harden yourself. Do harden it. And Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I can tell you Jesus is coming soon. And, you know, why Jesus coming then? 
Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. And my reward is with me. To give to everyone who according to his work. The second coming is not a distant event. It is drawing nearer with each passing day. As we observe the sign, you, you remember that? The sign of the time, we must prepare ourselves spiritually and eagerly await his return. Let us repeat. Have faith, diligently study the word, pray fervently, and actively share the gospel. Remember that the call to prepare is a call to internally life with Jesus. That is a, a call to re prepare. Because Jesus said, I prepare a place for you and then I will come back and I will take you home and you will be with me and I will be with you forever. So remember that, my friend. And, you know, today we need to prepare ourselves. Why that? Jesus is knocking our heart. Yes? Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and die with him and stop with him and he with me. Today, I just would like to encourage all of you, my friends. Can you open your heart? Let Jesus come into your heart. So one day, we will be with Jesus. And Jesus is knocking our heart door, yeah? Open the door. Open the door. Are you open your door? Are you willing to open your heart door to let Jesus come in today? May God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your being with us. Thank you, Lord, for your message. We need to prepare for Jesus' second coming. Let us to prepare our heart. Lord, we can do by ourselves. We need your help. We need your word to abide in us. Give us your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, how can we prepare ourselves so we can meet Jesus when he comes? Lord, I would like to pray for each one of us here. 
be with the pastor and be with elders and be with the deacon, deaconess and be with the board members and be with all the church members here to work together to grow your kingdom so we will prepare for your second coming. Lord, thank you for listening to our prayer. Forget all our sins that we have done to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.